Hello and welcome to what the video title says this is. In this video you're gonna learn how to use incremental static regeneration, meaning that you turn dynamic Next.js routes into statically pre-rendered routes, making your site way faster. If you use this in your personal projects, in your freelance projects, people you're working with are gonna think, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. And by the end of the video, you will. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at how incremental static regeneration, the superpower of Next.js, makes your app blazingly fast. It really does make a big difference. And to understand how it works, let's take a look at this graph right here. Normally, Next.js has no idea, I mean, how should it, what your user IDs could be, right? So this is a dynamic route inside of Next.js, meaning if you visit the you know, slash users slash John, Next.js doesn't know what John is and therefore by default it renders that route on the server at runtime. Meaning that as your users request that resource, the information gets sent back from the server to the client, resulting in pretty high latency. And that's not ideal. So what incremental static regeneration allows us to do is tell Next.js which user IDs are there and then at build time, so when we run yarn build or deploy our application, at that time, all these pages you can see here on the right side are already built out as static HTML and JSON for the information that is displayed on the page. And what that does is when a user comes into our application and requests, for example, the slash user one, right? So it's not John anymore, it's now slash users slash one. Next.js already has that information, knows what information to display on the page and can immediately give that page back to the user, resulting in way less latency and a way better user experience. That's why ISR is so powerful and it is really the superpower of Next.js. And now let's learn how to implement it and also to check if you implemented it properly. I'm gonna show you a little trick to check that um, to see if you messed anything up. So this is a Next.js 13 application. And in here we are gonna make use of the incremental static regeneration. Now let me zoom in you so you can see this a bit easier. And then to get started with ISR, the first thing we need to do is obviously a route to use ISR in. And we do that in Next.js 13 in the API directory because Next.js 13 has a file-based routing system, same as Next.js in the previous versions, which means we can have a, and that was from a previous test, let's do that together. In the API folder, let's have a folder called user. So that way, when people go to our application, they can type in slash user and then the ID, right? So slash user slash one. And to get access to the ID on the page, we can put in a dynamic route. And we do that by having these little brackets right here. We also use for arrays in JavaScript. We can initialize that, press enter. And then inside of this folder, we're gonna have a page.tsx which renders out a functional TypeScript component. However, if you don't use TypeScript, you could leave all this away and do just fine with regular JavaScript. There's nothing TypeScript specific in this tutorial. So when we run yarn dev and start up the development server, let's try out if we can actually go to that route. So let's go to localhost 3000 and then I, I can't zoom in for you the URL bar, but I'm gonna type in slash user and then slash one and of course that didn't work. Um, and I think the reason might be because we, yeah, we put that in the API folder. That's obviously not correct. This needs to go into the source folder and then the app folder, but not the API folder. So we just want this into the app. Okay, let's see if that works and it does. Okay, so we're on the page. I typed in into the URL bar slash user slash one. And for all users, because this is a dynamic route, it, was it would lead us to the user ID and then the page.tsx. If you're wondering how to get access to that user ID, we can have the user ID passed as params. So we can say the params object that gets passed to this page automatically by Next.js receives a param that is the exact same name as what you put, put into these brackets right here. So that would be user ID. User ID is of type string. And then this is a bit TypeScript specific, um, but this would work just fine with regular JavaScript as well. You just wouldn't have to type out this yourself. And then we get access to the params. And if we wanted to display whatever we put in as the user, so slash one slash John or whatever, we could use the params dot 
user ID. Check if that works and we are on path one. If I input John, for example, as the user, then it would show John because that's what we get back as the params right here. Great. So now let's see some interesting behavior from Next.js and to check whether we are running this certain route on server-side rendering or on incremental static regeneration or static side generation, which is kind of the same thing, then we want to run yarn build. And by building this app out, this is not gonna take long because it's a very small project, we can see for each page that exists in our application how that is being rendered by Next.js. And if we take a look at the slash user slash user ID that we have just created, we can see how much JavaScript it ships, but we can also see, which is way more important for us right now, what kind of route this is. And you see this little Lambda sign right here. I think I can zoom in so you can see this a bit easier. You see this Lambda sign right here. And if we take a look at what this Lambda sign means, it means that this page or this route is a server site rendered at runtime route and now your alarm bells should go off. That's not what we want, right? That's what I meant in the beginning of the video in this little drawing right here. Next.js doesn't know which properties exist, so it generates them at runtime, resulting in pretty high latency to the route and in a worse user experience. So the goal for us right now would be to change the Lambda sign that shows up right here for our dynamic route as this dot right here, because that dot indicates a static site generation. And with dynamic params, that dot would look a bit different. We don't even see it right now because no page fulfills that expectation. But let's turn this dynamically run route at runtime into a statically built route at build time because that makes it way faster. And the way we do that in Next.js 13 is actually pretty straightforward. So from our dynamic route, we can export a async function called gener generate static params and put those little curly braces. And this is a function name that is reserved by Next.js. So when we call it that, it will know what to do. And if we just put some random stuff in here, so const hello is gonna be equal to ASD that it doesn't recognize, it doesn't make sense to Next.js. And if we tried building this application again, it would let us know, you know, what we are trying to do in this function doesn't really work, right? So because this is a reserved name, we can't just do some random, um, some random shenanigans in there. We actually need to return an array from this. And inside of the get static params, you can make calls to your database to get all the user IDs that exist in your database, because that's what you'd want, right? I'm gonna mock this out. I'm gonna say const user IDs is gonna be equal to an array, and that's just gonna have one, two, and three. But normally you'd make a call to your database here, like so await db, and then dot, dot person, for example, dot find many, and then just um, get all the, in the select, get all the user IDs, like so, and then you'd return that from your function. But I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make any database call right now. I'm just gonna mark this out, as I said, to get the point across. And then what we need to do is return the array from the function. And we do that in a specific syntax. So from this function, we are gonna return and then the user IDs dot map and for each user ID. So that means we go through every item of the array and then every item of the array is available to us as this user ID property right here. And we are gonna implicitly return an object. We do that with this syntax right here with the parentheses and then inside of them, the curly braces, which is essentially the same thing as if we were to say a function block and then we return an object. It, it would be the exact same thing syntactically, just JavaScript makes it a bit easier for us. And then in here, we could say the user ID and return that from the function. And this needs to match whatever is in the brackets up here. Just keep that in mind. So in our case, that's gonna be the user ID. And now let's see what happened to our page generation. That's the little trick I mentioned in the beginning of the video that lets you verify if you did everything correctly. So if we run the build command again with yarn build, this is gonna be really quick. It's just a small project. And now we can check if we did everything correct by checking the little sign in front of our dynamic route. And as we can see, the route is now not rendered by the server at runtime anymore, but rather there's, there's a filled out dot right now instead of the lambda that we had before. 
And if we take a look at what this filled out dot means down here in the legend, I think it's called, it says SSG, automatically generated a static HTML plus JSON uses get static props. And what we just did is pre-rendered the first three routes because we passed in those as the user IDs, meaning if we were to access them now in the browser, it would be way faster than generating the information we need for them at runtime. Now, you might be wondering, Josh, that's good and all, but if I change something about the user IDs, how would the page know? Because th this is done at build time, right? Would I have to build out, would I have to redeploy my app every time there's a new user? And the answer is no, you don't. There's something really, really cool when we are working with Next.js 13 specifically that we didn't have access before or just in a different form. We did have access to it, but now it's way more convenient to use as a developer. And that is the revalidate option. Meaning that every certain time interval, this information right here is going to get revalidated, right? So if a fourth user were to exist, then we could check every so often if there is a new user or if there's less users and then render the pages accordingly. The way we do that is by exporting a const called revalidate and set that to an interval in seconds. This is not milliseconds. So if I were to pass in 60, you'd know the default revalidation time would be 60 seconds. If we hover over this, we can see what it means if you have enabled the TypeScript version in your project directory. Otherwise, this wouldn't say anything. So zero, specifying zero implies that this layout or page should never be static. It will always be um, changed at request time or revalidated when a request comes in. And that's not necessarily what you want because you really don't benefit that much from this functionality in that case. A better option for you would be to set the reval revalidation time in seconds just like I just did. And that can be zero or any positive number that you want. And the number you choose depending on how often your data changes. For example, if your data changes once every month because you get it from somewhere and then put it manually into your database, it would not make sense to revalidate every minute, every day, whatever. However, if there's a lot of new users, a lot of fluctuation in the users, in the documents, whatever your dynamic route is about, then it would make sense to actually use a number like, you know, one hour, maybe 10 minutes, whatever. And if we set this as false, this is the default and changes the fetch cache to indefinitely cache anything that uses force cache, essentially meaning it's rendered once and then not anymore. So when we deploy the application, Next.js goes ahead and checks all the user IDs that we passed it, but then not anymore. And we would have to redeploy in order for changes to for changes in this array to show up on the actual page. And that is probably rarely what we want, except the data is very stale and almost never changes. Now, interestingly enough, there's a lot of options to do this revalidation. You could do this on every single page that you want. However, you could also do this in a layout, meaning if we wanted to revalidate the entire page, we could go into our root layout of this directory. And also in here, we could say the exact same thing. We could say export const revalidate is going to be equal to 60. And by doing that, we have just declared that the whole project should be revalidated every 60 seconds if that's what we wanted. Similarly, if we were using some fetch right here, so const user IDs, and I'm just going to put an underscore so there's no name in conflict, is going to be equal to await fetch. Then we fetch from some URL where we get our user ID information from. We could pass this an object. And if we take a look at what we have access to inside of this object in Next.js 13, we get the next property. And this next property takes a revalidate as well. So instead of declaring it as a constant like before, we could just do it like this on a per request basis, where every time we fetch the URL, that is going to notice, OK, should I invalidate the cache? or not. So if this was sent, you know, within 60 seconds twice, the, the second one would be cached. However, if the second request was sent over those 60 seconds, like 70 or 80 or somewhere above that, then Next.js would actually go ahead and check, is this data still valid that I'm passing back to the user and revalidate the integrity of the data that we're requesting. 
And just like that, we can check if we applied everything correctly using the yarn build and then checking this little icon right here in front of our routes. We can also see if we did everything correctly, the routes that it has preloaded at build time. Now for large scale applications, like uh, you know 50,000 dynamic routes or 100,000, Next.js can handle that, but it will increase your build time because obviously these are made at build time. So that's a case you want to consider whether it's worth sacrificing the build time for a faster user experience, or if you have a gazillion routes, then it would actually probably make sense to not use these static generation features, but instead render them dynamically to save on build time. That's all I want to share, you. Thank you. share with you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.